May 22nd, 2023. It was a typical Monday morning with people easing back into their routines, but then something completely unexpected happened. A report surfaced on Twitter, supposedly from Bloomberg's news account, and it read, the Pentagon is on fire. With this image of thick black smoke rising into the sky. It was terrifying. And of course, with such a major event unfolding, social media erupted. This image was shared so many times that it reached hundreds of thousands of people in a matter of minutes. And what followed was the dramatic response from the stock market. It took a nose type, erasing billions of dollars in value in just a matter of hours. Now here's the catch. None of this was real. The image was generated using artificial intelligence, or AI, and Bloomberg's news account turned out to be fake. But who would do something so terrible? Turns out that our world doesn't have any less of bad actors. Their motives stretch far and wide, with some of them just wanting to make a quick buck, the others wanting to sway political opinion, and then the others who just enjoy creating chaos and watching things fall apart. In the Pentagon incident specifically, these bad actors left no trace. But the local media and authorities stepped in pretty quickly, and the panic came down soon. And yet this incident reveals something far more unsettling about the world we live in today, where the boundary between reality and deception is getting increasingly unclear. Misinformation has been a persistent problem, with bad actors eager to spread it. But just over the past few years, two powerful technologies, artificial intelligence and the widespread use of social media, have advanced and overlapped at an unprecedented rate, making misinformation spread wider faster and more convincingly than ever before. Essentially, this overlap gives bad actors a disturbing edge. It allows them to serve us with the information that they choose. It's ironic, really, that we even call it social media feed because we are being fed their agenda, bit by bit, scroll by scroll. I'm a researcher working on identifying AI-generated misinformation on social media. And my work harnesses the same AI technology for the right purpose, to identify and flag misinformation. And let me tell you, just in the past few years, it's gotten significantly harder for us researchers to tell apart AI-generated and real content. But don't worry, I'm not here to give you another media literacy lecture today. You've probably heard enough of it, and you're even bored at this point. As someone who's deeply involved in this space, I just want you to see how far artificial intelligence has come and the challenges that lie ahead as it merges with social media. We're entering a new era where seeing isn't believing anymore. Because this powerful overlap is designed to show you what you already want to believe. Let me repeat that and let it sink in. This powerful overlap is designed to show you what you already want to believe. And as consumers of this modern technology, we must be aware that this phenomenon is only starting to take off and must be approached with informed caution. Artificial intelligence, or AI, has been around for a while now. But generative AI, or the kind that both understands and generates information, has only truly taken off in the last five years. And this has happened because of the lower costs of computing, as well as significant advancements in research. Now, back in 2019, if you asked a typical AI chat system to maybe write a story about a dragon who discovers a secret kingdom, this is what it would look like. The dragon went to the kingdom, it was a secret, the dragon saw the king, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's almost like a kid trying to rephrase the same sentence over and over again 
hoping that no one realizes they're lost. Fast forward to 2024. Today, if you ask a typical AI chat system exactly the same question, this is what it would generate. Notice how the storytelling is super immersive, has such great attention to detail, even with just the naming of the dragon, Arcanis, feels like a character from Game of Thrones, right? Super impressive. Let's take this up a notch. This is how AI-generated images looked like back in 2019. And I know most of you are having a hard time telling what these are. They're supposed to be images of dogs. Take a closer look and maybe you'll find one. Even back in 2019, there were slightly better image generation systems, but they required deep education in the space to use them and were also expensive. Now fast forward to 2024. Today, this is what AI-generated dogs look like. High definition and super cute. And you can literally generate images like these for free. And no, you don't need to be a software programmer to do it. It's funny how all of these AI capabilities can seem so impressive until we encounter unsettling incidents like the Pentagon. Not just that, just in the past two years, there have been so many incidents of AI-generated misinformation. Like this image that went viral last year, showing how AI could disrupt the KYC or know your customer process, which is used for ID verification by a bunch of different institutions. Both the women here and the ID are AI-generated. And if you've been following the 2024 elections, you've probably seen tons of AI images like this one. This one specifically shows President-elect Trump being pursued by the police. Not just that, AI can now generate fully realistic short videos, something that wasn't even possible just a few years ago, two years ago. Let's just pause at this and move to the other piece of the puzzle, social media. The engine that fueled the spread and amplification of misinformation. Now, as of January 2024, 70% of the US population use some form of social media. And notably, 54% of the population use social media as their source of news. Now, what that means is more than half of the population in the United States use social media as their source of news. And social media platforms have thrived largely due to one major factor, personalization. Simply put, it shows you exactly what you want to see and believe. Now, social media platforms gather your information like age, gender, location, biases, preferences, beliefs, and everything else that you might not even know to fuel personalization algorithms to show you the content that you're most likely to engage with. Now, really think of it. We have this amazing technology to create content and with social media as the platform to deliver it to the right audience, those who might be influenced, this is a deadly combination. Today, almost anybody with the intention can use cheap, accessible AI systems and create misinformation. It can be textual or graphical. And social media platforms amplify this misinformation and show it to targeted audiences at a large scale. It's no wonder that misinformation was considered the top global risk for the next two years by the World Economic Forum. Now here are the pressing questions. How should we tackle misinformation? And who should really take up the responsibility? And should we tackle misinformation itself or the bad actors who are crafting this? Turns out that going after the source in a world where anonymity is so easy to maintain can be super challenging. Tackling misinformation at the content level proves to be a far more practical approach. Now, AI companies, as well as social media platforms, have their own set of initiatives to combat misinformation. And independent AI researchers, like myself, have been working on reverse AI systems to combat misinformation. We're also developing watermarking methods, which involves having hidden markers in AI-generated content so that they can be identified early on. 
Over the past four years, I've had the privilege of working with some of the best minds in academia to host a global workshop where we invite submissions for AI systems that can detect misinformation. We have made some great strides, and some of the systems that we built were super robust. But here's the worrying part. Just last year, and more so this year, our detection accuracies have gone down significantly. This only goes to show how hard the problem of misinformation is becoming and how easy it is becoming for AI to generate misinformation. Now, as researchers and companies work on combating misinformation, one thing is clear, that this problem is here to stay and it's exponentially exploding. And regardless of how good detection systems get, the problem can fully never be solved unless all of us, the consumers, play active part. Luckily for us today, we're still at a position where AI-generated content can be identified only if we took a closer look. In the first image, the lamppost looks kind of off. It's both inside and outside the fence. And although the building might look like the Pentagon, the windows and the shape are completely different. And in the Trump example, it turns out that the police are chasing him, supposedly chasing him, while not even looking at him. Clearly, that's not how real chases work. You can also use popular news verification websites to identify if a piece of news is indeed true. Now, while all of these solutions might work in the short term, we're slowly approaching a phase where it might be super hard to tell the difference. And keep in mind that these bad actors are often as smart or smarter than we are. They craft content with such precision that it might be hard for us to question. We are so caught up in how this content speaks to us that whether or not it's true becomes secondary. And that is why it is so important to change our mindset. Seeing is not believing anymore. We need to move to a mindset of actively questioning, verifying, and analyzing the content that we see. We're entering a new era, and the choice is ours, to be passively influenced by synthetic, targeted content, or to take control and question what we consume. The choice is still truly ours. Thank you, Jacksonville.